So I'm going to show you how to use the Twitter data importer in Gephi, but to do that you need to have a Twitter set of credentials. So you're going to go to apps.twitter.com and click on apply for a developer account. From there it's going to have you pick your profile, so go ahead and click continue. We are just going to do requesting access for your own personal use. And I'm going to go through this quickly, but you might want to pause the video so you can read all the text that's on the screen. So we're going to come up with a name and select our country and continue. Uh, we're just going to do this for academic research, which is what I'm doing. You might want to pick the right thing. We'll also do student project and learning to code. And then we want to talk about what we're building. So we can say analyzing streaming data in the Gephi importer. Um, for this question, are we going to make this development available to a government entity? We're going to say no. All right, I need to add a little more text up here. So, all right, so I've put enough text in there that I can continue. You can do that on your own. Uh, we're then going to go ahead, I've read all these already. You want to read those and accept the terms of service. And then you're going to finish the steps here. Eventually they will verify you. So once they've done that, you will come to a screen that's going to have some apps. You'll have the option to create a new one. I'm going to just pull up one that I have to show you where you're going to access the data. Now I'm going to have to block my keys out because otherwise you all can just copy them and that kind of violates the purpose of this. But you want to click on keys and tokens up here at the top. And then when you do that, you'll see that there's a consumer key and a consumer secret. And if you scroll down, an access token and an access secret. If you don't have these yet, uh, under application actions, you can generate them. And what you're going to do is copy and paste those into the correct fields in Gephi. Now, I already have the Twitter streaming importer installed, but if you don't, you're going to go to the Tools menu and then Plugins. In the Plugins window, you want to go to Available Plugins, and in here you will find uh, the Twitter streaming importer. I don't have it in my list because I already installed it, but I'll just show you what you do. You will click the box next to it, and then there will be an Install button here, which you can go ahead and click, and it will walk you through an installer. Again, this is for a different plugin, but the process is the same. It's really simple. Uh, it'll automatically start, uh, install, and then you want to restart. Once you restart, you probably will have it here. If it doesn't appear, you're going to go to Window, and then make sure you select the Twitter streaming importer so it'll pop up for you. Next, you're going to input your credentials. So that's what we just went ahead and got from Twitter. So click on credentials and it's going to pop open a box. Again, I have mine blanked out so you don't copy them, but you're going to copy and paste the values from the Twitter API window into these fields and then click OK. So Gephi is now configured for us and we're going to go switch over to Twitter uh, just to see what topics are trending today because that's going to give us some easy to see uh, trends that'll pop up. If you pick a, a term that's not very common, you're going to be waiting a long time to get data. So let's do NPS 102. I think this is the National Park Service 102nd anniversary. So that's a hashtag that's trending today. That's what we'll use in our example. So under Define the query, we're going to type in hashtag NPS102 and then click add so it shows up onto our list here. If you have multiple hashtags that interest you, you can just type them all in and click add so you get a list. Next we want to scroll down and figure out what do we want. The full Twitter network, the user, the hashtag network, or the emoji network. I'm going to do the user network, so what we're going to find here are people who are tweeting about this and following each other. And what we should see probably is little pockets of people talking to each other about this that may eventually connect back up. And then once we have that entered, we can click connect. And what we're going to do now is just sit and wait for people to tweet about this. Uh, you will sort of see them pop up here. That data is also going to stream into the data laboratory. So uh, we, here we finally just saw three people use this tag. That's probably uh, 
one person who tweeted it and a couple friends saw. That pops up this enable timeline at the bottom. If you're not seeing that, go to window and make sure you have timeline selected. So once some nodes pop up in your window, that should be there. As I was saying, this data is also going to stream into the data laboratory. So if we click over there, we can see there are our three nodes and uh, they're also appearing under edges. And if we wait, what we're going to see are more nodes pop up here. So there another one just popped up. If we go back to the overview window, we can see some of our data here. Now, this is just going to randomly have nodes continue popping up on the screen. And what we're starting to see is that they're not laid out in any useful way. So we can actually have a layout running as this is going. So we can click on the layout tab here and you can pick your favorite. I always like Yifan Hu and click run. And that's going to now format this, uh, format this a little bit nicer for us. We can do a little bit of zooming here to get it more in our screen, uh, change the size of those arrowheads, which are really big right now. So that looks a little bit nicer. So I'm just going to let this run for a minute uh, because it's going to be really boring for you to sit here and wait for more data to come in. Uh, but I'll go ahead and kind of speed this up so we can see the process a little bit faster. Okay, so now that we have a good amount of data, I'm going to click disconnect, uh, which is going to stop the Twitter streaming process from happening. And now we can actually focus on the data that we have here. So I'm going to recenter the graph. Try that again. All right. And uh, zoom in a little bit on that. Now it's not continually laid out here. So I'm going to go back and rerun my algorithm. And we actually have a pretty cute looking network here. Uh, I'm going to do the standard process I always do, modularity and uh, network diameter. So we can uh, color code our edges based on their modularity class. And then we can size code them based on between the centrality. So that gives us some interesting things. Uh, I am going to expand this a little bit so it looks a little bit neater. And now we can inspect these nodes. So uh, these big ones here, interesting accounts. Uh, this one is probably a national park maybe National Parks of California and National Park Service account, but the rest of these just look like uh, average users. And what we also have is this timeline down at the bottom. So this is going to show us how, to, uh, how these nodes appeared in the network over time. So if we click Enable Timeline, uh, we get the full timeline down here at the bottom, and we can't just run it like this. If you do that, you get an, a message that says you need an animation interval. What's happened here is that the whole timeline is selected. That happens by default. And if you mouse over, you can grab and drag this to form a little window. You can slide that window yourself. But that allows you to select an amount of time. And if you click play, what happens is that window slides over the graph. And so what it's showing us is when are these nodes tweeting? When do they appear in the network? So there you go. That's a quick tutorial on how to use the Twitter streaming importer to pull in a hashtag network of users from Twitter and use the timeline feature at the bottom to see how that network changes over time.